Do you often wonder when you should be saying you're welcome and when you could be saying something else? Then this is the video for you. I have broken it down into three categories, informal, neutral, and formal. And in this video, I'm going to give you plenty of examples in each of those categories. So let's go. Hello, my name is Callum Hams and I am the host of this channel, Hedgehog English. Here we give you English grammar advice, help with your pronunciation and give you new vocabulary, phrases, idioms, just like we're going to do in this video. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Well, let's jump into the first category and that is the informal one. And there's actually three subcategories in this category. And the first one is general phrases. The second one is using no and then something. And the third one is using don't and then a verb. Let's get to the general phrases. Okay, so you've got that's all right, of course, any time, sure thing, forget about it, it's all good, same to you, and it was nothing. I have to admit that although I use those phrases, I don't tend to use them that often. I do say sure a lot, but I use the next category even more, and that is phrases beginning with no. So here we have no problem, not a problem, no problemo, no biggie, no big deal, no worries, no qualms, no stress, no troubles, no sweat, no fret. And the one I use here most is no problem. I think I use this like 90% of the time. I think that most um, English speakers do tend to use this one a lot. But the other one I like, particularly in spoken English, is no worries, no qualms. And I, I would say them together. I would never write that in a text. Usually in a text I write no problem. Um, but if I'm speaking to other natives, I might say, hey, no worries, no qualms. And qualms here is just another way to say no worries. Uh, it's a qualm is like an undesirable situation. So that's why we can use it here. No worries, no qualms. Okay, so let's move on to the third grouping in this category. And these are the phrases that start with don't. So you've got don't mention it, don't worry about it, don't fret it, don't sweat it. And then for emphasis, you can use the word even. So don't even mention it, don't even worry about it. Just a little note here about pronunciation. Some of you might have picked up on the fact that I didn't say the t when I said don't. I didn't say don't to mention it, I said don't mention it. So I kind of drop the T, omit the T, or swallow the T. This is something that um, a lot of people who live in the south of England would do. So your Cockneys, your Londoners, I'm of course from that area. So I'd say don't mention it, don't worry about it, don't even think about it, drop the T. So let's move on to the next category, which is neutral. Obviously, when you're talking with friends, you can use the informal phrases. And when you're talking with colleagues or your boss, you can use your formal phrases. Well, these are phrases for situations in the middle. So first up is thank you. So when someone says thank you to you, your response is no, thank you. And then you've got you're very welcome. You're quite welcome. And then you've got happy to help here. Obviously, the original phrase is with I'm, so I'm happy to help, but we can drop that, omit it, so we just go straight to the adjective happy to help or glad I could help, the same thing. You could say I'm glad I could help. There's no need to. We just go straight to the phrase glad I could help. There's also no need to thank me. There's also my pleasure which again has a full sentence, it was my pleasure, but we drop the it was and just say my pleasure. We also have, it was the least I could do. <laughs> She's saying that uh, you could actually do more, <laughs> but this was the least that I could do. 
um, it's essentially like, look, it's, it's, it wasn't a big deal for me, you know, it's just a little thing. I just helped out a little bit. It was the least I could do. And it's also saying, you know what, I had to do something. And so this was the thing that I chose to do. So this was the least I could do. You know, I, I had to do something because I wanted to do something, even though it's something small. We've also got, I know you'd do the same for me. So that's something you could use with your friends. I know you'd do the same for me. Okay, so now let's move on to our formal ways of saying you're welcome. And these are obviously in work situations or when you don't know a person that well. So you've got your most welcome. Uh, in the neutral stage, we had you're quite welcome, you're very welcome. And of course, more formal is your most welcome. So you've then got the phrase, I'm happy to be of assistance. And obviously you could drop the I'm here and just start on the adjective, happy to be of assistance. And the same for, I'm glad I could be of service. Drop the I'm, start on the adjective, glad I could be of service. These are obviously phrases for business where you have a client and you are actually serving or assisting that person. You've then got the phrase, much obliged, which some people would say is quite old fashioned. <laughs> um, I think the older generation still tend to use this. I now just use it as a joke with my friends because it's very, very formal. Much obliged, sir. Um, so you can be quite humorous with this. The original sentence is, I'm very much obliged to you. So obliged coming from the word obligatory, which is like, it's necessary. It's uh, compulsory to do this thing for someone, which I think is why it was a business phrase, because obviously when you're paid to do a job, it's obligatory that you do it. So much obliged. And then you've got the pleasure is all mine, which is extremely formal. It's when you do some huge favor for someone and they say thank you and you want to say you're welcome, you want to say that actually, you know what, I really enjoyed um, doing this favor for you. The pleasure is all mine. And you can shorten it to the pleasure is mine or pleasure's all mine. So you're welcome for this video. The pleasure is all mine. I'm happy to help and I'm happy to be of assistance. And I'll be even happier if you like, subscribe and sign up for my notifications. Well, if you would like to further improve your English, then I highly recommend the Coursebook series English File. They were published by the Oxford Press and I will leave the links in the description below. If you want to keep watching English videos, then you can check out another one of my videos from the Don't Say series right here. And in the link below, you'll find one of my recommended videos. So I will see you when I see you. Mm -hmm.